Hello, you are listening to the Divorce University Online Podcast with your hosts, Thomas and Tammy Ferreira. Hi, I'm Tammy. I'm Thomas. And we are back. Last week, we talked about not waiting for permission from people and from other people in your life. And today we're going to talk about creating your game plan. Now, in talking about this, we're not going to um, we're not going to talk about your whole life. We're going to talk about creating your game plan in a divorce or child custody situation. Um, you know, January is the number one filing month of the year volume wise. It's when courts across the country have the highest volume of divorce and child custody cases filed is in January. Yeah, so say. this is something that a lot of you are probably, um, you know, coming into. And if you're not, and you're saying, Tammy, I'm already up to my eyeballs in it, then uh, this is going to help you to, to give you some things along the way that you can do. So your episode, I don't know what you're going to, I don't know what you mean by game plan. So you well, fire, for, fire when ready. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. So honestly, most people start this process by doing what? By going to an attorney. Uh-huh. And they should start. Oh, I got this. one right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> There's a cookie waiting for you in the other room. Okay. So, but we believe they should start this process by doing what? Going to an attorney. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know you are an attorney. Honestly. And putting down a big retainer. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, I, I, th I thought you were going to say, I don't know, have a conversation. Well, no. no but I'm thinking as far as creating your game plan. Oh. As far as getting help creating your game plan. Uh, in I, I, Thomas, I don't know that this was your very first call, but this is what Thomas did is you got a coach. Yeah. You got a coach. And that's a lot of what Thomas and I do. And I think people don't always understand what oh, it is. Oh, getting a coach is the first thing you should getting do. Getting a coach is the first thing you should do. All right. Because you're a coach. That's well, why you said that. There you go. Not the attorney. You need the coach. <laughs> no, I, I'm joking with her, but she's absolutely right. Well, I, and I already was an attorney, so I got a coach. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You didn't need the attorney piece of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so you got a coach and I, I'm not saying there's not value in, um, seeing an attorney or that you don't need to see an attorney. Obviously many, many people, you know, use attorneys right. through this process. Sometimes you need to do that. I, that's right. not the point of what I'm saying. I'm not saying an attorney should not be involved. I'm saying an attorney should not be your very first step. Right. And here's why it will be the most costly. Correct. That's true. Way that you do this. Right. And number two, you know, it kind of goes back to that whole thing of, you know, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Right. And so attorneys have a specific view of your case and it's legal only. That's true. And, and that's what that's how I that's how I think about it. That's right. And so I, I'm always interrupting the client to say, well, that's I don't need to know that. Right. Just. You know, what I what I need to know is, and then I'll ask a question. Right. And then they'll start to blah, blah, blah. And no, no. no. <laughs> I, you have to listen to me because I know what I'm looking for. Right. <laughs> right. I hear you redirect clients like that yeah. a lot. And <clears throat> it's kind of funny because um, I get calls all the time. I got another one a few days ago from um, somebody who um, had, has had multiple attorneys um, throughout their case. Yeah. And... Um, she, she and I spent about an hour, well, uh, over an hour, close to two on the phone. And she said to me, I have just learned more in the last hour and a half with you than I have in the last two years right. from multiple attorneys. Right. Because when, when I'm doing that initial interview, I'm strategizing. I'm not really listening. Right. I'm strategizing. Right. I'm taking what the person says and I'm I'm putting it in a, in different cubbies, uh -huh. different little holes. And yeah. honestly, here's what happens a lot. Right. I see this a lot. People get frustrated with their attorneys because things aren't happening a certain way or in a certain time frame or whatever. And they get really, 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 really frustrated. They feel like the attorney's not listening to them, yeah. not, not prioritizing their case not whatever. And a lot of times once I get on the phone with somebody and I say, well, look, 
here's the challenge for your attorney procedurally here's all the hoops they're jumping through right here's how this particular like you know this call i did with this lady one of our particular complaints was the retirement account it seems like it's just taking forever to divide the retirement account and people didn't do it in a timely way like they should have and once i explained the process to her of what that looks like and what all they have to accomplish she was like oh hmm. so this isn't excessive and it's like no it's not excessive and so at the end of the call she said to me well i guess my attorney is is doing an okay job then and i yeah. said Yes, I, probably, I, probably. I, I think your attorney is doing an okay job. And so, um, but the problem is, is that attorneys do not take the time to help you understand why they're doing something, you know, or, or how the details of the process work or how those things are going to impact you on the personal side. Yeah. They don't look at any of those things really. And, right. and you know, it's not because, it's just because the practice of law is so totally encompassing yeah. that really you can't worry about all the little extraneous things. And yeah. if you did, the client's bill would be, triple and they wouldn't right. be too happy about it right. you know so this is kind of where our coaching services have evolved from because i started to recognize you know i'll give you a little example i used to work in healthcare. okay i worked at the mayo clinic in scottsdale arizona fabulous place great people um just phenomenal health care I, I loved the job there i have nothing negative to say about it it was fantastic and you know, the, 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 the experience of that and having worked there and having, I had a doctor that I worked for who, who really explained everything and explained, you know, I think they tend to explain more in healthcare because the person's trying to make decisions about do i have okay i have cancer do i have surgery do i not do i treat it with chemo do i do this do i do that and so i really you know kind of got used to that explaining and having kind of a a high level you know understanding of what was going on and so when i made this transition into the helping thomas with his legal practice i sort of took that same approach and applied it to the law now most most lawyers have they're practicing law and their staff is practicing law and they're not people that usually come from you know a totally different background like such as healthcare and so for me i just kind of learned early on to very be very much be hand holding with with the patients and helping them understand you know things and why we were ordering other tests and why all these things were happening and so I kind of started to apply that when, once I gained the knowledge after working with Thomas for a while. And then as I started explaining to clients and we had higher client satisfaction rates and, cl and clients were better clients because they understood what we were trying to do and they were happier and all those things. Thomas is kind of, oh, like and for him, for you, I think it was a shift because you had only ever been in that law firm where you don't do that. You don't ask questions. You don't whatever. You just practice your law and you go on. Yep. And then once we started kind of seeing that, how much this benefited the client, we both started going, wow, this is where it's at. Really helping the client understand right. because you always make the comment that attorneys are a dime a dozen and you can always find an attorney. Now you say that I don't, I'm not an attorney. I don't say that, but, um, but really the coaching services attorney are. Attorney like me, 50 cents a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> They're as good as you. They're worth 50 cents. Um, but really trying to help the client understand. And what that does is a few things. Number one, makes the attorney's life easier. Yeah, it does. Because you have a better client, you have a happier client. The client understands more of what is going on and how they can help. And you have a higher client satisfaction rate because you as the client understand why the attorney is doing certain things that they're doing, why things are happening in a certain order on a certain timeline. And all those kinds of things, so you don't have the frustration level. Well, I remember this one person that I represented, and it's kind of like 
two weeks later, he's calling me, asking me when the case is going to be settled. Right. Well, we have to, we have to serve your preliminary declarations first. We can't settle the case. Right. Yeah. What do, What do you want to offer? We don't even know. It's like, well, this is taking so long, and it's like there are certain things that that have to be done. Right. We have a motion on calendar for for, for support. We right. can't, you know, we right. we haven't even done our response yet. Right. No. Right. Things have a certain time frame, and it's <clears throat> hard to know. I think it's hard to know with and when you're working with the attorney directly because number one, most of them aren't great at explaining those types of things, and number two. Um, I think what happens is the client's kind of like, okay, sometimes they're not sure, like, is the person being honest with me? Are they trying to cover their own, you know, uh, screw up? Are they, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on? And so if you're working with a coach, that coach has no objective whatsoever in your case, other than helping you accomplish what you want to accomplish. Yeah, that's true. If, I, if when, when I handle cases, uh, I'm very, cons there's a lot of things I'm really concerned about that have nothing to do with the client. Right. Uh, I'm concerned about my reputation, for example. Right. I practice in front of the same six judges year in and year out. Right. So I'm very concerned with their impression of me. Right. Uh, I also have a certain competitiveness uh, that I've had all my life and, and, you know, the law, the people that go into law or competitive. Right. And, and so, you know, you want to win. Like I hate losing. I just hate it. Right. And I want to, to win. And I, I have a very strong bias normally in, in favor of my client's position. Right. But, you know, in a way my desire to win is about me, not about the client. Right. So. Right. You also worry about malpractice. You worry about getting sued. That's true. So you're you're looking to that every time that you're you're advising a client. And then um, fourthly, um, you, you know, there's also the financial component in that right. the more you fight, the more the attorney makes. That's true. And so that's a little difficult. Now, one of the things that we do in our practice is what we try to very much shield Thomas from the billing aspect of it, who's paying their bill, who isn't on what time frame, and all that kind of stuff. We try to have me handle most of that, mostly because I don't want him, his handling of the case clouded by that. And I think naturally as a human being, we're going to be, mm. you know, there's, it, that's hard to, um, to, to, to just cut out of yourself, no matter how hard you try, right. there's, there's some, component. although I am concerned about my stats, right? You know, in other words, you know, I'm trying to increase my billable hours right. because I make more money that way. Right. And and so in some ways, my interest is is at odds with, with the client's interest. Right. In that the client wants their case done and done quickly and, and done efficiently. Right. And I don't make as much money if the case is done that way. <laughs> right. Right. And so. Not that I don't, you know, not that I uh, try well, to. Right. I mean, I, I think I you and I that. ethically yeah. really try to put that up on a shelf and always focus on doing what's right for the client. But um, but, but that is something know. that you have to work at. And I don't think all attorneys but take I have that these approach. These, these uh, attorneys on the other side that you know, do need what I would consider needless discovery, for example. Right. Or, oh, you know, we settled the case, but we left out this little detail. Right. It's like, let's just go you know let's just settle it and move on you right. know, we don't need to we don't we don't need bank statements going back five years for this you know right right so <clears throat> the attorneys a lot of times are you know and i'm not saying every attorney is like that some are and some aren't i mean you also need to know who you're hiring and what you're you know, you need to have some references and not just go in blindly. And honestly, people are a lot of times think they're looking for the most aggressive attorney. And that's not necessarily the best attorney for your case. You want somebody that's experienced. You want somebody that knows what they're doing. You want somebody that can go to trial if you need to. Um, but that doesn't mean they have to necessarily have an aggressive stance out the gate right. um, on your case. And I think a lot of clients fall into that trap. 
I find that it's hardest to settle cases with young attorneys. Yeah. A lot of times. The old guys, you know, like, who who was that guy? Um, uh, I can't remember his name, but he was downtown. And he's just, he's like on the cusp of retiring. And it's like, yeah, you know, you know, 10 grand here, 50 grand there. Okay. And and we were able to settle. Well, because the old guys already know where it's going to land. Right. And they already know, look, we can fight about this and spend the client's money, or we can just resolve it, give in a little bit financially, and still have our clients come out better off than they would have been. Oh, yeah. No question about it. Right. And and the old guys, too, know the cost in terms of emotion to to be constantly fighting for a year and a half is... You know, with with somebody who knows everything about your life <laughs> that you're trying to co-parent with, especially right, if, right. if you have kids. Yeah, it's very it's it's very difficult emotionally, and uh, uh, and in a way, as attorneys, we're not good at dealing with that. Right. I'm not good at. It's like you know the 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 client starts crying. It's like okay, <laughs> you're actually pretty good at that. Race but... ips loquitur. Yeah, yeah, it's not what you're there to do. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that happens too, I find, is that a lot of your case and the outcome of it, whether positive or negative, I would say the number one factor in our experience is the client's behavior. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's not the... You know, I always say like most attorneys are competent. I mean, do you have incompetent attorneys? Uh, Sometimes, yeah. But I I find that's rare. It's more often that the attorneys are competent. And yeah, almost most, e- almost everybody is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have those people that are exceptions, you know, and we, you know, we talk about that a little bit. There's a couple attorneys in North County that we just feel like are just complete exceptions, and they're just uh, head and shoulders above anybody else, you know, in the practice in North County. But th- that's again a one off. The vast majority of attorneys are competent and they are, you know, handling your case competently. It's just that your, you know, your perspective on it is, is that that attorney has all this power or influence or ability to affect the outcome of your case. Or even wisdom. uh, Yeah. And, and really... The person that can affect the outcome of your case the most is you. Right. And I'll I'll give an example. Uh, uh, Just this morning, we got a call from somebody. uh, And the question, uh, the person was in another state and had lived in California and wanted to move back to California with the three kids. And and there was some stuff that was borderline, maybe kind of sort of domestic violence, but not really. Right. and. It, and it's kind of like I knew what I knew what all the options were, and I set them out. I said, "Well, yeah, you could you could file in in your home state, or you could file in California. Uh, you could leave with the children in the dead of night, or you could have a conversation." And I was throwing out all these options, and then I went upstairs because Tammy was still in bed. And I woke her up. I was was not in bed. I had finished a call, a coaching call, but I had gone up to the bedroom because we can't sit across from each other and talk. It was funnier the way I told her. Yeah, I know, but it makes me sound like a lazy, no good son of a gun. She works all hours of the night. Don't don't (laughs) even. I'm I'm sorry. But the reason I the 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 reason why I went and got Tammy is because I had run out of all the telling them what the options are. It's like, well, what if I go to California? I don't know. Well, and here, you know? <laughs> here's what happens in that situation is Thomas has laid out all the legal options, but in his brain, he's going, okay, well, what if she chooses this one and then she does this and then she sues me? What if she chooses to leave with the kids in the dead of night and then the, and then the, the, her husband goes into court and gets an order that orders her and the kids back. And then she looks bad to the court because she's right. you know, left with the kids. And then and, she gets the black hat. and the, the Yeah, and there's all these, there's all these yeah. risks. Like, yeah. it's, it's the risk-reward thing. It's like, how much is this worth to you to take what level of risk? Right. And so, honestly, that risk portion of it is, in some ways not up it's not the attorney's call it's not their life that right. risk is on you the right. risk isn't it's not on the my attorney life. that's such a good point 
It's not my life. In right. fact, if it were about my life, I'd have an ulcer right now right. because I can't take on all your problems. Right. You know, I can either win, lose, or draw. You know, right. I go to court, I get a result, I right. go on to the next case. Well, and yeah. just because an attorney <clears throat> lays out options mm -hmm. and the attorney says, I think this one is the best, I always say, going back to my healthcare days, it's like if the surgeon tells you, oh, the surgery is the best option. Well, best for who? Right. Maybe I don't want surgery. Best for May me because I make $35,000. That's right. <laughs> Maybe you just told me that yeah. with the surgery, <laughs> I have a, you know, 30% chance of living more than five years. And maybe I decide that's not worth it to me. It depends on my age. Yeah, it's it depends worth, on my state and it's life. It's not worth it the pain from recovering from the surgery and, right. and the, the healing. and the. It might be worth it if I'm 40, but it might not be worth it if I'm 80. Right. Like, you know, it's your life. Right. It's not as simple as this is right. the best option. So when Thomas laid out the options. And it's a life coaching issue, not a legal issue. Right. right. So when the client, when Thomas laid out the options for the client, what I said to her is, look, this is up to you. This is your decision, which path you want to go down, because you're the one that's going to have to live with it. If they order you back to the state or they order any of these things, you're the one that has to deal with that, not us. And so, you know. I think that it becomes challenging for the attorney because they are worried about malpractice. They are worried about advising you in the wrong way and, and all those different types of things. And so this is the value of having a coach. But let's talk about divorce coaches, the typical divorce coach. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. In my experience, the typical divorce coach is somebody who has been through a divorce right. and has decided they want to help other people. Right. Okay. Now, that's how Thomas and I got here too. I'm not saying that that's a bad start to it. Okay? That's, a good, that's a good way to start. It's a good way to start because I think that is one of the downsides of attorneys a lot of times is they practice law, but they've never actually been through a divorce or they don't have kids. You know, and honestly, yeah, I would the probably the ones that ask don't those, have kids and don't have never been to, they're the hardest cases to settle sometimes. Yeah, honestly, I would ask yeah. those questions in the interview. I know they're a little personal, but I would not want somebody handling my divorce that has, I would prefer somebody that's been through a divorce. But if they haven't, I at least want them to have been married, have, be married and have kids and kind of understand that dynamic and what it's like. Right, yeah. But the vast majority of divorce coaches don't have education or don't have experience beyond their own. And if they do, what they tend to do is to get life coaching mm -hmm. certifications. Yeah. And so they approach it from this holistic pulling your life together kind of perspective, which is good, which is a component of the coaching. I'm yeah, not saying that right. it's not part of my goal is to a help very you, important one, right? Help you figure out long-term what do you want to be, do, accomplish, right. whatever. Because that'll determine your legal strategy. And your decision right. making. Right. right. So it is a part of it. The problem is, is that you also need someone who has the legal right. training aspect of it because you have to understand that ultimately the arena that you're playing your game in, so to speak, is the arena of the court. That's true. And I'm not saying we're going to dive straight into court and that we're not going to try to find alternatives. And I, that's the other thing that coaches can do is help you figure out, can I do this self-represented? What parts do I need an attorney for? Will mediation work? Do I need right. a domestic violence? Can the, court, can the court solve a, a, a problem that you have? Right. I mean, how many yeah. times do we see somebody file for domestic violence with an attorney, spend all this money, they don't end up getting it, and they end up with 50-50 custody? But they tried it because the 50, because the DV would give them an advantage on custody and support issues. That's like, true. We see that a lot. We see we see that strategy way overused, and many many times it does not work. And then you're in a worse position because then you've empowered the difficult ex, and you've spent a ton of money. Yeah. So you need someone who also understands what the court wants from you how the court wants you to behave, how to deal with your ex in a way that is not 
uh, giving you heartburn, putting the kids in the middle. You know, there's and throwing the advantage to him or her. Right, <laughs> right, and in in the process, yeah. giving them an advantage because you didn't know how to conduct yourself. Mm-hmm. And again, these are all pieces that I feel like. You know, this is kind of the issue with therapy, in my opinion, too. Therapy's great. I went to therapy. I, it's I, I, Our kids have been in therapy. Thomas and I have had a marriage therapist. Lots of place for therapy. But that doesn't mean that a therapist necessarily knows how your actions and reactions are going to impact your court case. Right. Yeah. There's two sides of this. Because the therapist will help you deal with the... Like uh, your like own, your, your own emotional reaction to something, which is really important as an attorney. I want a client coming in who is not reactive right. because that hurts their credibility in court. Right. Right. And so yeah. I always call the coaching kind of that gap between, you know, the therapist is helping you deal with yourself and your emotions and your whatever. And you got this attorney that's prosecuting your case, or I shouldn't say prosecuting. Yes, this. prosecuting is the right well, word. Well, I know, but that sounds so sounds criminal. Like, it sounds so criminal. Yeah, that it, it's handling your case, it's litigating your case, helping you litigate it. But then there's yeah. this abyss between the legal, the legal part and the um, therapy part, right. where all of your day to day interactions and decisions happen. Right. And that abyss is where people lose their case. Because it because a a, le- a decision in a, in a legal case is, it's it's a business decision with an emotional overlay. Right. So you've got, yeah. You know, it's not necessarily about achieving the objective, best result of paying the less least amount of money or paying the most amount of money or having the more time or less time. Uh, but a lot of it is, what are your life goals? Right. And then how does a certain parenting plan fit in with those life goals? Right. You know, how does a certain uh, uh, support payment affect that? Right. Because it's, yeah. it's a business decision with an emotional overlay, but that business decision isn't just impacting some random, neutral some some right. some third party business out there. The business that it's impacting is your you. life. Yes, right. <laughs> your life is the business part of it that's that's right. impacted by these decisions. And so, if you have a divorce coach from the bear or custody coach or whatever, you know, right. Tom and I do coaching around both of those issues. But if you have somebody from the very beginning, it's going to save you a ton of money True. because. You're going to be able to operate efficiently. Even if you retain an attorney, you're going to know what you want to do. You'll have your decisions made. You'll know how to communicate with them efficiently. You'll know how to, to, to get what you're looking for from your attorney. You'll be able to handle your day-to-day life in a way that increases your attorney's ability to win your case and makes their life easier. You know, your coach can talk to you about other alternatives that don't involve necessarily the litigation path that can potentially save you more money and my goodness the grief yeah the grief that it can save you and you know what the coaching does really is it compresses time yeah for you because how many times do you know people that are like two three five seven years you know sometimes we'll run ads or have something out there and people will come on and say, Oh if my God, I needed I... this eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if only I had known all these things. Right. And so that's what you have to do in this, in this situation. You can't afford to just figure this out as you go along, because once certain decisions are made, right. you've locked yourself in. And right. so really you need to understand in advance you need to compress your learning curve. You need to compress time and gather all the information that you need to gather to be able to make the type of decisions you want to make that creates the life that you want for right. yourself. And and you know what? As, a, as an attorney, I hate having an indecisive client right. because they're always changing strategies or changing, or even changing lawyers sometimes. But right. it's always... Oh, something's not going right. I got to change this. I got to change that. Right. Uh, and it's so helpful to have a client that knows exactly, for example, what parenting plan they want. Right. And then 
knows how they're going to use it. So they have this this overarching goal in in their life, and everything is subservient to that. Right. So every every legal decision that we make in the case has reference to a central theme of their life of what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, and what that does is it makes your client decisive. Right. Uh, decisive clients are more persuasive than undecisive clients. Right. And more persuasive in front of the court. Right. Right. And the, and you become decisive when you have enough education about the issues right. to make the decision. And then I you, get to win, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and yeah. you, 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 you can't right. make these kinds of, of legal choices yeah. that affect your life without being educated about them. Right. You got to be educated. You, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, you know, it's sort of like trying to pour a legal class into somebody over a period of, you yeah. know, uh, of Three the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to compress it, but the coaching can do that for you. Right. Um, and otherwise what happens is you're drugged through it with the, with the lawyer in court and you're trying to figure it out as you go along and you don't know, you know, what the best decision is. And right. I always tell people like, you know, I can tell you what you, I can tell you what I would do, yeah. you know, in this situation. But that doesn't mean it's the right decision for you. That's true. Because maybe your value system doesn't, isn't the same as mine. You know, yeah. I have people that say, well, should, it should I, be, but should I do this? And it's like, well, I don't know. I don't know if you should. I can tell you, here's what all your options are and here's what it would look like potentially. But mm -hmm. what, what it should be is up to you. You know, are you willing to give 10 grand on the settlement? You know, should, you know, people say, well, should I, should I give in 10,000? I don't know. Is it worth 10,000 to you to be done with this and not have to spend any more on the emotions and the attorney's fees and all those things? If it is, then you should do it. If it's not, and you are desperate for the money and you need that 10,000 in order to eat and function and keep the electricity on in your house, well, then maybe you shouldn't agree right. to that. You know, so again, it's kind of going back and applying those things to your life. And most of the time your attorney just doesn't know your life at that detail right. because they don't have the time and the bandwidth to dig into your case on that right. level. So in a way you're a life coach, but you have, but you specialize in how these legal issues affect your life. Right. Right. And that's it. And your, you know, your coaching and the is end, the same way. And you know, I feel like a lot of what, what Tammy teaches people that, I mean, these are life, these are kind of my philosophy of life too. You know, we, because right. we're together, we, we, we share a, a life philosophy in a way. And, and that's been, you know, in our last episode, I mentioned a book that I had read uh, in 1990, for heaven's sake, yeah. you know, that, that had a big influence on me. Right. And it, it influenced the way I think about life. Right. Okay. So I bring that to the table as a, as a coach. Right. Uh, you know, I know that it's, it's generally self-defeating to sweat the small stuff just to pull an example out of the air. Right. Uh, that's what everybody does in these legal cases is they sweat the small stuff. Right. And if you sweat the small stuff, you, you're not doing your cost-benefit analysis. Right. You're not, you're not getting the value that you should get. Right. And the emotions and the conflict of, you know, a divorce or child custody case feeds those issues. Right. And so really you need somebody that's that new, you know, people will say, Oh, I talked to my friend that went through a divorce or I talked to my sister or my mother or my whatever. Here's the thing. Those people aren't neutral. Right. Those people all love you and want what's best for you or are shaded by their own experience. Right. Um, and their own outcome. And so you you know, it's very simple. Like people will call up and say, okay, I have two kids and my neighbor has two kids. You know, why am I getting 3000 a month in support and my neighbor's getting 4000 a month in support? It's yeah. like, well, because support isn't just based on the number of kids. This that... is 10 minutes. Okay. The, 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 the support isn't based on just the number of kids you have. It depends on the incomes of the parties. It depends on how much time the kids spend each place. Depends on health insurance costs. It depends on, there's all these factors and the factors are a little bit different state to state, but there's all these different factors that go into it. And you can't just say, oh, 
you know, I should be getting the same thing as them because we have the same number of kids. No, it's more nuanced than that. And so that's the kind of stuff that you really, in order to have an effective game plan and not spend your entire life savings, you need to invest some money up front in getting help and getting educated in a way that takes into consideration both the legal aspect of what you're dealing with and the life aspect of what you're de- dealing with because they're intertwined. You cannot separate them. Amen, sister. True, true. Yep. All right. Any parting wisdom? No, you've given us all the wisdom you have. That's it. I'm, <laughs> I'm an empty vessel at this point. <laughs> all right. So we hope this is helpful for you heading into the new year. Um, you know, if you've been struggling, you know, and you're not at the beginning of the case, but you're having some of these struggles that we talked about, now's the best time to 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 get some coaching help because it it's the only way most of the time that people can change the trajectory of what's happening in their case is you have to start getting that outside education and understand what's happening. So if you need that, give us a call, visit our websites, uh, Thomas's websites, myfamilylawoffice.com and our podcast sites, divorceuniversityonline.com. You can get more information at either of those. If you are listening to the podcast, don't forget to rate and review us and also subscribe so you get notified of new episodes. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit the like button below if you like this video and also subscribe to the channel so you get notified as new videos are released each week. And we will see you soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Divorce University online podcast with your hosts, Thomas and Tammy Ferreira. For more information, visit www.divorceuniversityonline.com.